Is the Apple stock a buy now days after announcing its fifth stock split since 1987 and delivering impressive earnings? Or is it way overvalued? How has Apple stock splits impacted its price in the past? And how could it impact it before and after its split adjusted trading begins on August 31st? Am I adding the Apple stock to my portfolio? And if so, at what price? How much Apple do I even have in my portfolio? And what type of investors should be looking into adding the Apple stock to their portfolio? Because as you probably know by now, if you've been following me for a while, investing strategies are not a one size fit all. And what works for me may not work for you because probably I have a different risk tolerance than you. My financial situation and goals are likely different than you. We are probably not the same exact age and are not married to the same exact person because that would be weird. Unless you're watching this in the parallel universe and you are my alternate reality twin, in which case it's awesome to meet you, buddy. If you don't know your unique risk tolerance, please stop investing of any kind right now. Open up a new tab, go to learn.investdiva.com forward slash yes and register your seat for my free masterclass and get my risk management toolkit for free just for attending. Today I'm going to analyze the Apple stock from five points of my signature Investiva Diamond Analysis or the IDDA which analyzes any asset from five points fundamentals, technicals, market sentiment, risk assessment, and overall how it can fit in your portfolio. And of course, my most recent price targets. I was actually planning to have this video out last week, but we were hit by a tornado that cut out our power for five days and internet connection for seven days. So I had to be very patient before I could share my views with you. We are going to cue in the intro, and while we do that, head over to the comment section and tell me how many Apple products do you collectively have in your household? We are going to cue in the intro, and let's go. I'm Kenna Danielle, a three-time author and the founder of the Invest Diva movement, the march to jump on to take control of your financial future and to make your money work for you. I've been following the Apple stock for years, and most recently I compared it with its 5G infrastructure competition in this video. So if you haven't watched that already, make sure to check it out. Fun fact, Apple's market value of over $1.9 trillion is bigger than the GDP of Canada, Russia, or Spain. So Apple delivered impressive results on July 30th and announced in its third quarter earnings that its board of directors approved a four for one stock split. What this means is that if you have one share of Apple priced at around $400, you're now going to have four shares of Apple, each worth around $100. So it's kind of like changing your $20 bill for $5 bills. It won't add on to or reduce your net holdings, but it will give you more bills, which could make you feel like you have more money. So in my opinion, the reason why Apple has done it in the past and did it this time is purely for marketing purposes. Apple has one of the greatest marketing minds behind it. So it kind of makes sense that they extend their talents to their financial department. What the heck does this have to do with marketing, you ask? Well, for one, it's a huge PR boost every time they do this because more media contributors, including myself, will feel necessary to cover the news. But have you heard of the term buy the news and sell the rumor? So the news came out on July 31st, but when will its impact start to wear out? I'll get into that in a little bit when I look at the Apple stock price action on the charts. But back to the stock split advantages. Being traded at a lower price could make the Apple stock more approachable. 
Now, the idea of the Apple stock being super cheap makes it more of a household name, which goes hand in hand with the Apple's brand identity as well. Of course, in reality, this is absolutely pointless because you can buy any stock at a fractional amount on brokers like Robinhood, Webull, Webull, and TD Ameritrade. For example, even if you have only $50 to invest, you still can buy $50 worth of Amazon stock, which is priced well above $1,000. So this part of it is more about investors psychology than real fundamental change in the company's valuation. Does that make sense? Talking about investors psychology, let's now move on to IDDA's second point, which is market sentiment. Currently we have bulls and bears evenly distributed across the market with the bulls saying that the, that Apple isn't too big to grow even more. And bears either saying that the Apple stock is way too stable and wouldn't give investors with high risk appetite an opportunity for great gains, or that it has the most expensive valuation in a decade. Bulls say that Apple is still innovating with introductions of Apple Pay, Apple Watch, Apple TV, AirPods, whatever, and each of these could drive a lot of revenue, but more importantly, help retain iPhone users over time. But bears say that Apple is behind companies like Google and Amazon in artificial intelligence or AI development, notably with Siri voice recognition, which could be problematic because tech firms look to integrate AI in order to deliver premium services to their customers. Now, before I dive into price action analysis, I'd love to hear from you. Are you team buy or team sell when it comes to the Apple stock? head over to the comment section and let me know. Now, let's get to IDDA's third point, which is technical analysis. All right, we are going to analyze the Apple stock price action on the daily chart. First, what I'm going to do is to check out the Apple stock split history. So the last time the 741 basis stock split was June 9th. 2014. So we're going to go all the way back to June 2014 just to find out that after they announced their stock split, the Apple stock price continued to go up on an uptrend that had started back in January or February 2014. Before that, they had a two for one basis stock split on February 28th, 2005. This is before the iPhone era, so it's going to be interesting. February 2005, after they announced it, they had a little bit of a pullback for two months, then it bottomed out and the stock price continued to go up. By the way, at that time, the Apple stock price was only $5. How does that make you feel today? <laughs> Fast forward to today and I also want to get a bigger picture on Apple stock. As you can see, Apple has had a very repetitive pattern since 2003 where whenever it reaches a high, it pulls back to at least 50% or 61% of the retracement level before shooting back up. In general, it has been a growth stock, but it has been creating pullbacks for people to get back in to the markets. So because the past two stock splits had a kind of a different outcome right after the stock split started trading, uh, we cannot really base our analysis on the past performance of the stock price during the stock splits. A more sure price action analysis would be based on the repetitive Apple stock pattern. It looks like that the 443 level, which I did identify back in the day as a new Apple stock resistance level and is a price at which I actually sold some of my Apple stock, has become a new resistance that could create a pullback. If history is of any indication, and mind you, risk disclaimer, it is not always in an indication of future performance, but we could expect here to see a little bit of a pullback at least to one of the key Fibonacci retracement levels. This uptrend has not yet matured enough for it to reach 510 before fully pulling back to the 50% Fibonacci retracement level. So in my opinion, that could be a little bit unlikely. Switching back to the daily chart, we can see the pullback might actually already have begun. We have a formation of a bearish engulfing right over here 
after Apple reached a new all-time high at around $457. So personally, I have set buy limit orders for Apple stock at these levels, at 394 and 357. I'm also setting a buy limit order at 329, of course, when the stock split trading starts. And if this prices have not yet reached it, then the limit orders are going to be adjusted based on that. Currently, I have sold majority of my Apple shares. I only have four shares of Apple left in my Robinhood account. My average cost is 280, 280. Um, my interactive brokers account, I only have five shares left at my, and my average cost is at $178. As you know, I normally buy partially and take profit partially to mitigate my risk. Apple's over $1 trillion market cap provides us with a relatively stable company, making it a medium to low risk investment. However, its dividend payment is relatively low at 0.73% yield. So for those investors with lower risk tolerance who depend on dividend payments for fixed income, Apple may not be the right choice. Of course, Apple is already a mature company, so it may not provide us with humongous amount of growth as some of the speculative small cap companies would. But at the same time, we could be sure that this company is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. That does it for my Apple stock analysis today. Tesla has just announced a five for one stock split. So I am going to share my views on Tesla along with 20 or more other assets in the premium investing group or the pick this coming Thursday. So if you'd like to get my views on all of these assets and you'd like to get in the group for free for three months, make sure to open up a new tab and go to learn.investiva.com forward slash yes. If you're not interested in my education or only interested in my strategies, then you can go to learn.investiva.com forward slash hello to get into the premium investing group. I'm going to add all these links in the description area. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. Invest responsibly. And remember, the only path to true wealth is by making your money work for you.